Okay, so before we start the lecture, I would like to ask your uh, consent if you are going to allow me to record this lecture. And this lecture will be also available on YouTube, uh, for example, for those who will have uh, disconnection and internet problems. So the attendance will be considered even though you're uh, absent, but uh, make sure you're going to... Uh, complete your activities. Uh, can I see your consent or are you going to say yes for the recording? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you for your response. So now we will have a new topic. So. Hopefully, uh, we are going to uh, able to finish all of this and uh, we move to our uh, third uh, and on, we are on the sixth already and later we'll have uh, an example of a simulation uh, problem that uh, I will present to you on using Pocket Tracer. So uh, we'll start the lecture now. So uh, thank you for uh, your presence on this lecture and we start. Now uh, for our course outline, so we already uh, finished uh, lesson four yesterday. Now we move forward for the topic on uh, virtual uh, local area network. And uh, what is left for us are uh, lesson six routing technologies, uh, switching technologies, and uh, server load balancing. But, uh, but actually, we are already uh, doing all of this now. And uh, so uh, our lesson uh, focus more on the uh, virtual local area network. Uh, we will have some overview on uh, uh, virtual lands and how uh, virtual lands uh, was able to uh, perform con compared to uh, local air network. And uh, also this lesson will allow us to, uh, uh, this uh, also will provide us uh, why we need to use uh, uh, virtual LAN and how uh, virtual LAN works and also the application of uh, uh, virtual LANs. Now, as a review, uh, uh, yesterday uh, we are able to discuss one of the subnetting uh, techniques that is using a uh, variable length uh, scale uh, subnet mask so uh any questions on this because uh, this is only one uh, one problem and there's will be another one that i'm going to teach you later so this uh, problem is uh is applicable in a real situation so uh, just like having a, a number of computers, 23 computers, 60 computers, 12 computers, 20 computers, uh, 31 computers, and 14. So um, how many offices or area that you're going to connect with this computer? So you have uh, six. And every six have uh, each capacity. 
And that's why uh, we will try to balance everything so that uh, our network would not be able to uh, would be able to cope up. Uh, one of the problem in a local area network is the traffic. So if we have more computers, so definitely if uh, we're going to send data, it creates a lot of uh, delay and sometimes you could not be able to connect to the internet. So this is important. So uh, this uh, method of uh, subnetting using variable length will allow us to, uh, what's the main uh, idea of uh, having variable length uh, subnet mask? Anybody? What is the main uh, reason why we do uh, variable length subnet mask? Any any answer? Why why do we uh, perform variable uh, land subnet mask again? For us to efficiently uh, utilize the IP address that we uh, we have. So basically, since we start at uh, slash twenty four or CIDR twenty four. So we begin our IP address at uh, 24, but inside uh, uh, the notation 24, so you have uh, 2. So dividing 256 into uh, two uh, groups, so you have uh, 128, and this would be your slash 25. And after, you will have uh, uh, slash 26. And also uh, slash 27 and slash 28. Together, uh, you're creating uh, small bits of packet and it's like uh, it's going to be uh, divisible by two until the end. So you will allocate uh, IP address for your router at the last part. And on this uh, example, so let's say your IP uh, provider, your, your main router is your 10.10.10.10.0 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, uh, CIDR24. So you focus more on how you're going to allocate all of these. And uh, we now proceed uh, with uh, uh, our topic on uh, virtual area network. So how uh, do we... Uh, we implement a virtual area network. So there are a specification related to Ethernet, but one specific, uh, specification is used uh, uh, extensively in uh, the Ethernet network is uh, virtual LAN. So uh, virtual LAN is, uh, is, uh, allows us uh, to provide uh, uh, VLAN tags or uh, it's create a priority field uh, useful in application. And uh, it's uh, proposed to isolate users in the data center and, uh, and uh, carrier network. So uh, basically, this is to allow people to uh, communicate without uh, the real connection, but uh, you're, you're creating your own uh, uh, you're, you're creating your own network within uh, your system, but you're already disconnected in the uh, real connection. So what does it mean? So meaning every uh, field uh, that we have, every workstations and hubs and, re and repeaters uh, in a LAN segment. So a LAN segment is also known as a collision domain. Why is it called a collision domain? So most of the time in a LAN, so since we uh, send data, so uh, what remains is the segment, uh, the area uh, within which uh, uh, broadcast and multicast are confined is called your uh, broadcast domain. And, uh, uh, and this uh, LAN uh, consists of one or more segments. So defining broadcast and collision domain is LAN in a LAN is uh, depends on how 
workstation, hubs, and switches and routers are physically connected together. So meaning, uh, if you have uh, a large number of computers, so definitely you will have a lot of uh, collision and you need a lot of uh, broadcast domain. And also, uh, VLAN allows a broadcast domain to be defined without uh, using routers. And uh, this is uh, using uh, software uh, to define uh, which workstation are to be included in the broadcast domain. And routers would only have to be used to communicate between uh, two uh, virtual LAN. So, example, uh, we have uh, this one. We have uh, two uh, virtual LAN and uh, and uh, we have uh, two routers, so it's either uh, the two will uh, communicate and uh, it's going to be uh, on a different uh, uh, address, but they have still a... So what is the difference between a LAN and a virtual LAN? So a local area network uh, usually have uh, the to following topology and uh, a local area network uh, is on a single uh, uh, broadcast domain while uh, virtual LAN is on a multi uh, multi uh, multi multiple uh, broadcast domain and are in local network. The packet is advertised to each device uh, while in a virtual local area network, uh, the packet is uh, sent to a specific uh, broadcast domain. So likewise, uh, every domain, so it allows us to, uh, to uh, be uh, specific to which uh, broadcast domain that we're going to send. So without uh, any more uh, problems with the router so we could uh, uh, virtual LAN can operate on, on its own and uh, we have also uh, to discuss the uh, virtual LAN standard so we have uh, Ethernet is uh, originally targeted at uh, virtual LAN or at uh, local area network but uh, soon uh, we have a uh, multi multiple uh, corporate organization where sharing a single large local area network uh, it becomes uh, difficult to manage so that's why i the institute of uh, electrical and Ele electronics engineers who, who are uh, going to uh, publish the standard develop the uh, virtual land specification and uh, this allows up uh, out up to uh, 4,096 uh, different uh, virtual LANs to exist in a uh, physical uh, network. So in this way, uh, each organization have its own virtual LAN and simplifying uh, network configuration while uh, at the same time providing uh, network isolation. So uh, we have uh, this as your standard in a virtual LAN tag. So in uh, figure two, so this is how uh, the frame in virtual LAN goes. And usually it is added in your uh, layer one, layer two uh, OSI uh, model. So uh, how uh, virtual LANs work. So when a LAN bridge uh, receives data from a workstation, so it tags uh, the data with a virtual LAN identifier. So we call it uh, uh, explicit tagging. So it's also possible to determine the virtual LAN. The data received uh, belongs to uh, implicit uh, tagging. When uh, you're going to compare implicit tagging, uh, when you say implicit, the data is not tagged, but a uh, virtual LAN from which data uh, came is determined based on the information, like uh, the port uh, on which the data arrived. So tagging can be based on the port from which it came and uh, the source or the media access control. What is the media access control, by the way? What is uh, media access control? 
What is uh, media access control? So media access control is your physical address. Yes, your physical address of your uh, your physical address of your uh, computer or your device. So in this way, uh, the source network address or some other field or combination of field are uh, classified uh, based on the method uh, uh, is used. Okay. It's not working. Okay. Uh, so uh, we uh, move forward. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, types of the virtual land. Later we'll discuss each. So, so we have the broadcast domain uh, from the switch and the switch can be able to eliminate traffic because if you're going to have a local area network, so you will wait for the one uh, data to forward to another computer. So what will happen is, so if you're having local area network, so the data will just stay here. And later in uh, Cisco Packet Tracer, we'll try to see how uh, if we send a mail or we simulate how it's going to be implemented, uh, the local area network. But uh, in uh, next week, we will have uh, a, a module regarding uh, virtual uh, area network so that you will have uh, one part of your uh, project. And uh, I'm going to leave one week uh, for your project so that we could uh, finish this maybe next week. And what is left is uh, for you to uh, finish all the requirements of the course now. Uh, this is level one and we have level two. So when you say level one, there is still a physical layer. So meaning there's still a, a connecting medium. But on level two, so there's only physical address. So whatever the physical address that is being uh, broadcast here also uh, will be also simulated uh, using uh, the software. So you, you don't need now the computer because the address has been uh, already been uh, uh, simulated in the software. So they will just having the same uh, implementation. So this is uh, level one, uh, virtual LAN, and this is level two. And uh, how this uh, virtual LAN tag works. So uh, as mentioned earlier, so virtual LAN tag is implemented in your uh, Ethernet frame. So these are the uh, parts of your virtual LAN tag. So, uh, so it contains 16 bits, 3 bits, and 1 bit, and 12 bits. So now we are going to... Uh, discuss the parts of each uh, virtual LAN tag. So the first tag is the uh, tag protocol uh, identifier. This uh, field is set to value of around uh, zero uh, times uh, 8,100 in order to identify the frame as IEEE 802.1Q. So uh, take note. IEEE 802.1Q is your virtual LAN uh, uh, standard. So if you see this standard, meaning uh, this computer is under uh, is uh, compliant with virtual LAN and you could operate using virtual LAN. And uh, also uh, you could uh, perform uh, level one and level two uh, virtual LAN tagging. And the second... Uh, 
uh, part of the virtual land tag is the uh, priority code uh, point. So uh, this is a PCP. So this is a priority code uh, point. So uh, you have a PCP. And this uh, uh, part of the virtual land tag indicates the priority of the frame in order to provide the class of service for uh, different traffic types. So uh, since how many uh, classes of uh, IP addresses do we have? So in uh, using computer network, so we have how many classes that is used in uh, computer network? So we use uh, three classes. We have class A, class B, and class C. So also for the fourth, uh, for the fourth uh, part of your virtu virtual land tag, so we have the drop. So drop uh, eligible indicator. This indicates whether the frame may be dropped in the presence of congestion. So there's a method here that. Uh, in virtual land tag, it's easy for them to drop uh, the uh, frame, and also uh, it it doesn't really drop the frame, but it would allow uh, other uh, frame to be prioritized, and also it would uh, be uh, take a lot of time to uh, send again the frame, and uh, this uh, will just. Uh, try to uh, put in the uh, Ethernet frame na. Uh, there's traffic inside, so uh, the next uh, frame would be uh, sent. Now, for the last uh, virtual and tag, so we have the uh, VLAN identifier. So this indicates uh, one of up to uh, 4,096 uh, virtual LANs. So the frame uh, which may belong to. So this is your ID. So that's it is your uh, virtual LAN identifier, which is about uh, twelve bits. So any questions with the uh, parts of your vir virtual LAN tag? Okay. So we now move to after we have the parts. How do we uh, implement virtual lands? So uh, uh, there's a database in the virtual land. It's called the filtering database, which uh, there should be uh, bridges that would be able to maintain, and uh, the that all bridges and land have the same information of their database. The bridge determines uh, where where the data is uh, going to the next. And uh, it's like on uh, based on normal LAN operation. Once the bridge uh, determines uh, where the data is to go, it's now a uh, need to determine whether the virtual LAN identifier should uh, be added to the data and sent. Now, if the data is to go to a device uh, that knows about the virtual LAN implementation, there will be a identifier that there is a virtual LAN aware. And also, if the device has no knowledge of the virtual LAN in implementation, there will be a message you're going to send that virtual LAN unaware. So that's how uh, virtual LAN works in the real uh, scenario. So now we uh, move to the types of virtual LAN. So we have a uh, layer one that is a membership by port. So at first, the membership uh, comes uh, by uh, implementing the uh, how much uh, uh, how how are the ports are being identified. So in the example last uh, earlier, we have uh, three computers, and also we have. Uh, 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 virtual LAN port and uh, which one belongs to the port. So uh, before we try to implement this, so we need your uh, cable and and in this way, uh, virtual LAN layer one will be enrolled in your software 
and after that uh, you will be able to uh, send uh, your information between computers now for layer two so the membership in uh, virtual LAN is based on your physical address of the workstation so the switch uh, tracks the mac address which belongs to each uh, virtual LAN so each um, mac or your physical address your media access control form a part of the uh, workstation network interface card so if for example your cell phone or your uh, computer is uh, moved so there's no configure reconfiguration needed so so all you need is to uh, 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 you will be uh, going to be uh, remain in the system and you're going to be remain in the uh, workstation so unlike in the uh, layer one so the membership tables must be reconfigured so every now and then so you use a uh, membership by port so you need to arrange the port where you want to be uh, connected while on the mac address without uh, the router so you could uh, still uh, communicate within the, the network that's the difference between the two types of virtual LAN. so uh, to be able to uh, present these uh, types of virtual LAN, so we have this uh, diagram so for example uh, layer one so you need to have a uh, uh, assignment port from which your computer is uh, assigned and uh, once a while it's it would like be a normal local area network that it's going to communicate between users and uh, usually a uh, layer two uh, virtual LAN is used to uh, communicate between uh, servers and at the same time uh, you could be able to uh, get the number of uh, workstation and you try to uh, teleoperating so meaning without uh, workstation uh, this uh, uh, in the broadcast domain you could still uh, work on your uh, own so for example uh, using virtual LAN so we have a computer from AutoCAD so once uh, you have your own uh, network between uh, the users so i have uh, students so once i connected them to my virtual network so it would be easier for them to communicate and also uh, last time we have this uh, interactive game so we use uh, kahoot so also i i get your email address and uh, in that way, we could have our own uh, virtual uh, uh, virtual simulation that uh, we are not allowing other uh, per people to enter in the game. So only uh, students in Kamsi could uh, use that uh, game. So if you are enrolled, or if uh, you uh, if I reach the capacity of allowing only fifty. So 50 students and uh, 50 to 100 students. So you are very lucky because you could still uh, review on our topic because uh, those uh, interactive games that I already sent to you will be part of our uh, end term test. So uh, this is uh, the types of uh, virtual lands. We have layer one and uh, layer two. So why we are implementing virtual LAN? So it's a based first reason is based on performance. So in network, uh, uh, normally our problem is uh, traffic. So if you're going to send a broadcast domain consisting of 10 users, uh, if the broadcast traffic is intended for five users, then uh, placing those five users on a separate virtual LAN can reduce the traffic traffic so this is uh, already uh, uh, under the research of Passmore. so this uh, it's proved that uh, virtual LAN is uh, very uh, useful in uh, handling uh, traffic congestions and also 
a uh, compared to switches, routers, and which requires more processing of the incoming traffic as the volume of the uh, traffic passing through the routers increases, so does the latency also in the routers. So it also reduced the uh, performance. And uh, the use of virtual LAN reduces the number of routers needed. So that's why uh, you could, uh, once you enroll the workstation on your uh, computer, so definitely uh, you are part of the uh, virtual local area network. So you're not going to arrange your IP again. So you're just going to be in the uh, broadcast domain so that you could access the uh, virtual LAN uh, network okay second reason why we are implementing uh, virtual lab is the formation of virtual work groups so last time we have uh, this example so i'm going to share for those who have uh, did not have the opportunity so so we have this okay so what is a virtual group? So virtual group uh, is having your uh, being part of a group that is uh, uh, one moment. Okay, and uh... okay, so this is the end of the game. So, congratulations to all who have connected. And this is uh, this is how we deal with uh, okay. I just wait, share my uh, screen. Another last question. It uh, converts information, data, and other communication from one product. So last time, so we uh, have test, this uh, example. Okay. So this is a virtual work group. So it only allows uh, people within. So since I have only a private, uh, I cannot have this public because it's a midterm test. So once you're part of the domain that I, I have uh, created so you could access this whether you're you're in the class or okay so this is the end of the game so congratulations to all who have connected information data and other communication from one protocol or format to another So that is a gateway. So congratulations. So for example, uh, uh, well, with this uh, uh, virtual work group, we are able to uh, test uh, your knowledge on how uh, you perform. Or So we have in total response for the last question. So when you see... Uh, uh, 34 who answered so meaning there are 34 who managed to uh, respond in uh, 30 seconds so that's how uh, it works in uh, this 
the problem in the stop sharing. Okay, so we move to our PowerPoint. And uh, now uh, it uh, it's allow us to uh, bring uh, people and uh, communication between uh, members of the work group will be high. And uh, to contain uh, broadcast and multicast uh, between the work group, because uh, multicast, because I can I can also have this uh, uh, public and private. So it depends if I'm going to invite uh, people uh, outside to answer also the question and also to test the game. And uh, it's also easier to place members of the work group together without uh, virtual land. The only way this would be possible is to physically move all uh, members uh, of the group uh, closer together. So this allows uh, teamwork and uh, it allows you to be uh, get involved with your uh, group mates, how you're going to answer the question. And also, uh, it's going to be, uh, we use virtual land to simplify administration. So in the study of uh, Verger, so 70% of the network costs are, uh, are the result of ads and moves and changes of users in the network. So that's why if you're going to uh, add and move user, so there, are, there come a times that uh, yeah, your your capacity would uh, able to uh, to exceed because uh, to eliminate this, they use virtual LAN to put other user to another location in but in one domain. So this allows them to uh, manage uh, the user in uh, compared uh, to LAN. So there's recabling, new station addressing reconfiguration of hubs and routers become necessary but in a virtual land so the task is simplified because if a user move uh, within a virtual land rec reconfiguration of browser routers in an unnecessary why because the user is already in the broadcast domain so meaning you're just going to uh, connect with the broadcast domain and uh, this in in uh, in this way, you're going to uh, have the administrative work uh, will be reduced, and also a one of the full power of virtual LAN is uh, only it it's when you're going to use a good management tools uh, that are created which can allow uh, network managers to drag and drop users into a different virtual LAN or to set up aliases. So that's why uh, in the previous uh, example we have using Kahoot, so you have uh, aliases. So I'm not going to give your, uh, I'm not allowing to, to put your name. Sometimes if you are allowed uh, to put uh, a different name, so it's going to be a different, uh, So, uh, example, uh, we have this. So, uh, at the end of the game, so what are the names of the students? So likewise, this would be an example that you need to put your student ID so that it would not be clear if you are going to have low score or something else. And also when you're going to be one of the best scorers, so you will have your own idea that in, you are almost uh, completed uh, the test. And this, how uh, it, it's uh, 
was easy for me to uh, I'll just put the code and you enter the game if not I'm going to stop the game and uh, I'll wait for the others and also this allows us to reduce cost and uh, virtual land can be used to create broadcast domain which eliminate the need for expensive router so instead of having a router so you will have your broadcast domain within the software and also uh, it also provide us security because sensitive data uh, may not be broadcasted on the network and uh, in such cases placing those uh, users who have access to that data on virtual land can reduce the changes the chances of uh, outsider gaining access to the data so virtual LAN can also be used to control uh, a broadcast domain, uh, set up firewalls, restrict access, and uh, inform the network manager of an intrusion. So these are the reasons why we use uh, uh, virtual LAN. And also we have the application of virtual LAN. So uh, it provides us additional uh, security to the network communication among work groups and uh, it's within the organization. Second, it's going to be easy and flexible expansion and reallocation of network devices as well as work groups. And also we have uh, allows network administrator to configure the network in a centralized environment. And uh, fourth, so we uh, try to reduce latency and uh, traffic load on the network and uh, network devices, thus improving the network performance. The last is we usually use this in uh, real-time services or video streaming uh, that can be set up in a separate uh, virtual LAN and be isolated from the network congestion due to the traffic from the other data types so these are the applications of your virtual LAN, and i think we have a short uh, summary that uh, virtual lands allows uh, uh, broadcast domain to be defined without using router so this is the main uh, takeaway that we learned today that we could uh, have local area network without using routers but we need to set up virtual LAN. And there are the types of virtual LAN. So we have layer one and layer two. So what is uh, layer one? How do we uh, define layer one uh, virtual LAN? Anybody? We, uh, if it is layer one, it means that you're only on the port and layer two, you are on the media access control or your MAC or your physical address. And uh, one of the problem in layer one is that you need always to configure your port while on a MAC address uh, on your uh, media access control layer two. So you will have just your broadcast domain and you could uh, have your own uh, network. So you don't need to uh, configure your port as compared to layer uh, one. Now, uh, what are the benefits of using uh, virtual LANs? So it's used to provide best performance, formation of work groups, virtual work groups, simplify administration of uh, computer network, uh, reduce cost and uh, better uh, security. So in this way, uh, Google uh, Classroom is also like a uh, virtual uh, local area network wherein uh, we are sharing our output, our results. So in this way, uh, it will not be costly on the side of the administration to provide uh, uh, physical uh, networks which the, because when you're going to have your laboratory yeah, physically in the uh, in the campus 
So you need really to use uh, switch routers and you need to have uh, cabling also. And uh, it would take time, like if you set up. And uh, likewise, that's why we use a uh, network packet tracer. So to uh, reduce cost and also this allows other, uh, not uh, students of uh, other uh, university to enter our uh, domain because I will allow only a uh, uh, student from Kamsi. So the last part for the summary. So we have uh, various uh, applications of virtual lands that uh, were significant to the growth of uh, internet traffic nowadays. So that's why I, uh, we implementing uh, this uh, uh, virtual land in uh, companies and even small businesses so that in cases what's the problem with uh, not having virtual land so mostly in Philippines we have uh, an intermittent connection and also uh, power surge uh, also blackout so when you have your own uh, network your virtual land so even if uh, uh, even if there's no uh, connection with the main uh, with the main uh, system, so you could still uh, enroll to the web because uh, virtual LAN is implemented. So meaning uh, it would uh, reduce problems also, but. It, it's uh, going to be a large investment specifically to those uh, uh, companies uh, if they want to implement also virtual land. So this is uh, for this today for the lecture and I will now uh, have your network packet tracer demonstration on a simple uh, network. Okay. So is it okay I give you more time to log into your network packet tracer? Cisco. Maybe five minutes is okay. I'll stop the recording of this lecture and maybe I will upload it after the class. And also the PowerPoint slides will be available on Google Classroom so you could have it after a few hours because it takes time for Google to uh, upload the recording of this lecture. So any more questions with the uh, virtual land before we proceed with our uh, Cisco Packet Tracer laboratory? Any more questions? None, sir. Okay. So I'll stop the recording. Okay.